Welcome back to the channel guys. Today um, it's going to be probably a super fast recovery on a SanDisk flash drive that uh, we just received for data extraction. The customer sent us uh, a sample or a donor or, or whatnot. I haven't opened it up. I don't even know what it looks like inside but based on the shell I can tell that it's most likely a similar unit. Uh, what do we got here? This here is the original original case this came from Texas and um, I brought a donor along just in case but probably won't have to use it let me explain what I would normally do what I would normally do in this case is that um, original device as you see it uh, has a controller on this side and it has an end let me pull this off just because it's in the way and it has an end the end is telling us that this is a 128 gigabyte device and we're using a 00388b0 controller Let's see what I got of my spare unit Uh, spare unit is not exactly the same. It's uh, 0038A1. And this unit also A1. I don't think that's going to make too much difference. It will either work or it won't. See this? This is my donor. It's functional, it gets access, the unit starts, that's the donor that I brought for my own uh, device, but as it turns out, we do have slight difference, A1 on this one and B0 on the patient. Um, the one I have on my own donor is also A1. So, um, let's test the actual patient now patient fires up and nothing what I would suggest doing in this case is taking the memory out and um, testing the unit itself if it's gonna produce a controller um, recognition something along the lines of uh, SanDisk Anisha um, then then we know controller is good uh, the NAND is bad and then the NAND would need work alright so it's marked up put this here Turn on the fuel extraction and we're ready to go.
just like that the board gets separated from the memory Okay, I can finally turn off oh, PC3000 portable and get our board all cleaned up. Let's see what difference has that made. If we see uh, any sort of recognition from the unit, then we know that the problem was with an end. If we don't see the recognition from the unit, then we know the problem was with something else. Mm -hmm. It's taken in 60 now. It used to take 80, I believe. But I'm not seeing any changes. Let me plug this in directly and power it up. Yeah, you see, there is no change, and we should see a change. And that's why I think what we're gonna do is going to actually help. Here's what I have, and this is a something I make for uh, devices that come in frequently and TSOP48 uh, packaged memory. Uh, this clamshell socket right here it opens up like this and the doors pop over and inside we have um, same memory chip that we just removed it looks exactly the same but look at this it is not soldered it's not soldered so I'm gonna just set it aside and I'm gonna lock these doors here and I'm gonna plug that in to the deep spark USB stabilizer. When that's connected, we power it on, we get 64 megabytes Anisha SanDisk recognized. That's a working controller showing signs of life. We should have been seeing same recognition when the memory was removed from our patient unit. And if the if it's not communicating, there is an issue. So I'm going to turn this off and what we're going to have to do is prepare our memory chip for the socket. This is the beauty about this socket is it makes it so easy and fast to perform all this stuff. Um, you don't even have to solder it back on. Oh, this looks great, uh, nice and clean. Gotta check for um, 
jumped headers I don't have any so that looks amazing uh, let's uh, brush it up with some fiberglass real quick final inspection nice and clean nice and clean now we're gonna take this socket open it up and place our chip in it just like this close the trap doors and plug in our device Let's power it up and see sadly <clears throat> this unit is uh, is not recognizing the NAND so the controller does have something to do with does have something to do with what's going on well uh, the client did supply his own so why don't we find out what is inside we may get lucky and he might have had supplied what we're looking for and if that's the case maybe we can still save this all right so what do we have oh yeah we have exact match so perfect um okay well if we have an exact match that's amazing because that's gonna be a socket that we're gonna make these are the clam shells that I was talking about and uh, just gonna use one so to make an adapter like this it doesn't take me a long time Now, when we connect this time, look at what the device is recognized as. Same thing, 64 megabytes, Anisha, SanDisk. Perfect. So now we have a controller that actually responds. Pads are very close to the footprint of the headers on the socket. Um, so when we mount it, it just got to make sure that alignment is perfect. It's not going to be a lot of room to to attach a lot of solder and obviously you're going to need like a really good um, soldering iron to do this I wonder if I need to switch my um, tip here tip is broken um, might need to switch the whole iron actually Alright, so once you tack two of them in, it's sitting in securely, and then the rest you can just go easy and uh, do one by one. The thing is, is that if you jump them, 
they're, they're, they're gonna be not fun to uh, try to get them separated. So make sure you're, um, so I always make sure that I got good focus on, uh, on the working area. Um, it's easier, uh, obviously it's easier to put, uh, like, a like, a this OP chip right onto, uh, the donor board. But the reason why I think this method is still far more superior, obviously, it's because you only have to do this precise work once. Clark, that's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. That's it. Open it up. Take our 128 gigabyte chip from the previous socket. Put it in this one. It's the one that was scratched up. Make sure all the headers are aligned. They're aligned on this side. And they're aligned on this side. The moment is truth. Power up. And there we go. Perfect. We got this going, guys. Let's see um, our studio, what they say. There's our unit, partition, let's view it in hex, show you that that's the device we're actually viewing, sector map, bam, and we're scrolling. It's kind of empty, but it's a big unit, it's 128 gig unit, so it will have a little bit of data on it, and maybe that's enough, that's all it, there was. Looking at it here, maybe like 15% full, maybe 20%, but it's done. So now we just got to clone it and get data back to the client. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, if you need your device that all of a sudden stopped getting recognized or is getting recognized with the wrong capacity, uh, like a 64 megabyte Anisha, for example, instead of proper SanDisk name, then link in the description will take you to our website where you can request um, our services and we'll definitely help you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.